tomorrow, Lydia. Ooh, that's creepy. I don't remember. I'm sure this has not been cleaned in a long time. But we got Olivia Newton John's Greatest Hits. This uh, was one of Steve's eight tracks that was in this car. And that's what we're listening to. It has been working well. Let's try it again. It's funny, I remember eight tracks when I had my high school 1972 El Camino. And I remember listening to uh, Led Zeppelin too. And I can remember right where those breaks were in the tape, right? During the songs. And then it would start up again when it skipped over to the next section of that 8-track. Same with Leonard Skinner. But today we're listening to Olivia Newton-John. It is uh, Friday, the day before Steve Reeves' birthday. So I thought I would do a special video in the Jag. Well, how are you guys doing? I hope you're doing great. I hope you're staying fit for life, as Steve liked to say. He got that quote from a friend or from an acquaintance, and he asked the acquaintance if he could use that, or he told the acquaintance he'd like to use that. So he started signing some of his books. Stay fit for life, Steve Reeves. Steve would have been 97 years old tomorrow. Crazy, huh? He wanted to live to be a hundred. Unfortunately, he didn't make it. But his name will live on. And his legacy will live on. Because of you, and me, and others. So thanks for coming along with me on a ride in Steve's 1976 Jaguar XJS. You don't see this every day. They're becoming more and more rare. The XJS was produced for around 20 years, making it one of the longest production, I think it was the longest production Jag in the Jaguar line. And the XJS is really starting to gain traction, appreciation, and popularity. Of course, a lot of rock stars owned an XJS. I'm thinking of immediately the guitar player for Queen and Joan Jett had one. And there were others. And this car is a 12-cylinder, and it will get up and go. It'll reach 150 miles an hour, but we don't need to do that, do we? It is 50, almost 50 years old. It has 58,000 miles on it. They are meant to be driven. These cars perform better when you drive them as opposed to just letting them sit in the garage. And if you're going to get into collecting cars, there's always going to be, we're well, not going to talk too much about this because I don't want to jinx myself, but there's always going to be something that needs to be done. I have a whole suitcase, I have a whole briefcase of Steve Reeves receipts of things that he had to do periodically. I wouldn't say this car was, you know, troublesome, but there's just things that need to be done. Recently we had the windshield wiper motor replaced. And you know, not bad on a 50-year-old car. Windshield wiper motor served its function and now it works great. Here in Texas, you can't get the 
are inspected unless your windshield wipers work. So that's fairly important. Also had the spark plugs cleaned, had an ignition module replaced, and had the air conditioning recharged. If you live in Texas or Florida, Arizona, anywhere warm, then that needs to be done too. George Helmer told me that uh, Steve would drive this car up and down the highways of California when he was making an appearance or visiting friends that lived elsewhere. He and Aline took this car into New Mexico, I believe, New Mexico and Arizona. Steve sold the car to George Helmer in 1999. George had the car until around 2008, and he hardly put any miles on it whatsoever. I think it needed work at that time. And then Joe Vitale bought it and had a lot of work done to it. It has a Jaguar HE engine. HE stands for high efficiency. The, J the JAG motors uh, in the 70s, 75, uh, 76, 75, 76 and up, 75 was the first year model, uh, were problematic. So Joe had a Jaguar V12 HE engine from an 80s JAG put into this one that's what we have now. Other than that, it's all original. Some people put a Chevy engine, but I would never do that. I want to keep this car as original as possible. Aline, Steve's wife, rode in that seat right next to me. A princess of Polish descent. I wrote all that down on a piece of paper and put it in the uh, glove box over there. I really get into that kind of stuff. I like history. I think it's important to remember history. So many cars these days, they all look the same, like a box with four tires on them. So I think it's important for our kids to hopefully be inspired by something that they don't see every day. What else? I've tried to make a few videos on my bicycle with this um, action camera, but I can't get the audio right. I bought a lapel microphone, and it's just not picking up audio for some reason, so... Still working on that, so we'll see how this does in the car. Arnold recently proclaimed Steve as the greatest bodybuilder ever. Did you catch that? So I think that pretty much seals it. If Arnold says that, and I would consider Arnold to be the second greatest bodybuilder, of course, that's probably up for debate too, but. Who else do you have out there? Reg Park, uh, you know, Ronnie Coleman, Dorian Yates, Lee Haney. Eugene Sandow, you know, a lot of people would say maybe he was the greatest ever because he kind of started the whole thing. And by the way, I was told that his name is actually pronounced Oijin Sando. Eugen Sando, the German pronunciation. We call him Eugene Sandow. Anyway, so Arnold proclaimed Steve Reeves as the greatest bodybuilder ever. Steve would be thrilled to know that, I'm sure. Uh, and maybe thrilled is not the right word, but interested might be the right word. 
because Arnold, you know, he was always a big fan of Ridge Park. In fact, Arnold and Steve met, I think it was at Jack LaLanne's birthday party. And um, Arnold went up to Steve and said, You're my hero, you're my idol, you're my favorite. And Steve said, Don't give me that crap, Arnold. I read your book. Encyclopedia of a Bodybuilder, I know that Reg Park was your hero. <laughs> and supposedly Arnold said, well that's just because I knew I couldn't look like you. Who can? So that was interesting. Uh, what else do we have on Steve Reeves? My buddy Carl from England, I believe that's where Carl is, is selling his Steve Reeves collection. Um, I think Carl is in his 60s. And I've known Carl for a couple of years now. He's uh, traded stories over email. And um, he's a big Steve Reeves fan. So, you know, life happens. He is selling his... Uh, Steve Reeves, Mr. America weightlifting belt that was presented to Steve Reeves at the 50th anniversary recognizing Mr. America and that was an award that Steve received I believe that was in North Carolina I can't really remember Steve never wore the belt. He may have tried it on, but he didn't actually train with the belt. But it's a beautiful belt. I actually expressed interest in it at one point. I do have a Steve Reeves belt that Steve wore, and Steve wrote in the belt. If you can conceive it and believe it, then you can achieve it. That's what Steve wrote in the weight belt that I have. The weight belt that I have is leather, pretty nondescript, but it was a belt that Steve wore when he worked out. And it's signed S Bear. S as in Steve Bear, B-E-A-R. I have no idea. Maybe that was a pet name from, from somebody. I won't even venture to guess who. What else? A Steve Reeves mug that Steve uh, drank his protein drinks out of, according to George Helmer, with SLR on the mug. Steve's 1950 Mr. Universe medal, one of the awards he got at the 1950 Mr. Universe in London. Beautiful, and a case. And then a medal from the 1948 Mr. World contest. So those are the four things that you can get if I don't beat you to it. I'm going to hop out here and take a picture of my beautiful Jag with this background right there. Be right back. This will probably be my thumbnail. So those are things you can bid on, and I actually told Carl he should be putting that stuff on a bigger auction house rather than eBay, like Julian's auction. I'm not sure about eBay if that's where he's going to find his crowd. He might find on uh, eBay. Um, he may find on Julian's auction more people that he would be. He'd have a better. Uh, he'd have better luck with on Julian's auction. There are people bidding on, you know, ten thousand on up, hundred thousand, 
200,000. I know Kurt Cobain's guitar sold on there, Johnny Cash. So, you know, big, big name celebrities, and that's where Steve deserves to be as well. I drove this car very rarely, and uh, let's see, I owned it for 22 years, from um, 1977 to uh, 1999, so he owned it for 22 years, so he was very familiar with this car, but he didn't drive it except on special occasions, and as mentioned, if they went maybe on a trip outside of California. about Texas is the roads are very good here. I've lived here for most of my life. They do a really good job of keeping these roads in shape. I had somebody ask about um, Steve's passing and once again, I've made like three videos on my bike, so none of those videos turned out well because you can't hear the audio. All you hear is shh, wind noise. And um, Steve was visiting Sandra in 1999. Of course, Steve passed away in 2000. And in the book, A Moment in Time, Steve was looking in Sandra's refrigerator. Steve had a big appetite. And uh, Sandra asked him if he felt all right, and he said he had a pain in his stomach. But he thought it was an ulcer, because he had had an ulcer when he made the movie A Long Ride From Hell, because he had to write, produce, act, all those things. And so... Um, he knew what an ulcer felt like, so I guess he thought at Sandra's is that, that that that's what he had was an ulcer. He didn't like going to the doctor. He felt like he could take care of it himself. Unfortunately, in this case, that was not the right thing to do. He should have gone to the doctor. And eventually he did go to the doctor in 2000. Uh, all the tests came back inconclusive. So he went in to have exploratory surgery in the year 2000. And that's when the doctors discovered lymphoma. And so they wanted to do the radiation while he was there in the hospital. Unfortunately, he didn't get to that point. He died on May 1st, 2000. He had gotten up to go to the restroom, and George Helmer and another friend had um, helped him back from the bathroom onto the edge of his bed. And as they were helping him on to the edge of his bed, the life just went out of him. Steve was looking, or George was looking into Steve's eyes to see how much pain he was in, and in the next minute, he was gone. George said it was like Zeus, or Zeus is Hercules' father. It's like Zeus came down and took Steve's spirit, Hercules' spirit, and that was it. He passed away at age 74. Too soon.
have to thank George. He has done so much to maintain Steve's legacy. Of course, the publisher, Dan Lurie, for um, Muscle Training Illustrated, did a lot as well. Brought Steve out of retirement. But then um, George Helmer is really the one that got Steve back in the limelight with the Steve Reeves newsletter, S-R-I-S. And that story was that George was at a bodybuilding contest in Las Vegas, and he uh, saw Steve Reeves at a desk. He was selling the Milton T. Moore book, and so George went up and bought a copy. And the whole time during the bodybuilding contest, he couldn't stop reading the Steve Reeves book. And so when George went back home to California, he asked his wife if he thought he might be able to get Steve to make a special appearance at George's and George's wife health club that they had just opened. And so George thought he would try. So he looked in the phone book and there was Steve Steve's uh, name and phone number. So he called it. Elaine answered. And George says, is this the Steve Reeves residence? And Elaine says, yes it is. How may I help you? George says, I want to hire Steve to make an appearance at my club. Do you think he would do that? And Aline says, he doesn't do that anymore. But I'll get him on the phone. So Steve got on the phone. They chatted. Steve said, yeah, I think that would be something I'd be interested in. And Steve said, you'll need to set that up through my wife, Aline. So Aline gets back on the phone. George says, I'm not sure I can afford Steve. How much does he charge? And Aline says, he charges $1,000 an hour, which is fitting, worth it. George says, well, do you think he'll come for two hours? And Aline asks Steve, and he says, yes, he'd love to. Steve drove this car down to uh, George's, I think it was a 90-minute drive, from Valley Center, he drove this car down to George's gym. George said he saw Steve in the car and saw him get out of the car. Oh, you don't want none of this Cadillac. Uh oh, we got rain. We got rain to get home. Good to check if our windshield wipers work. After a couple of hours, Steve says, hey, I'm having so much fun, I'd like to stay a little bit longer. And of course, George loved that. So after the uh, opening, George says, can I uh, come out and see your ranch sometime? you got to love George, because he took the bull by the horns. And uh, Steve said, sure. Set it up through a lean. So a week or two later, George did that, and he was out at the ranch, and that's what started those two, their friendship and their business relationship. George has a ton of stories about Steve. Well, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. This is my birthday special tribute video for Steve. You know, I got a ton of pictures that I haven't posted and 
some videos. I don't know that I have any more of Steve posing or anything like that, but I do have some videos of others you know, who competed with Steve or during that era. So I have that. And I have a ton of stories. I've met so many people. Boy, this car seems to run better when it goes like 70, 80 miles an hour. It's just so smooth. It jumps up to 90 just like nothing. I'm sure it'll do 150 in every bit of that. <laughs> Alright guys, we will see you in the next video. Happy birthday, Steve. 97. Let's see if we can get Olivia Newton-John to play again.